In this video, we'll be talking about Fermat's factorization or in more specific, we call this as Fermat's Kratzkis factorization method. And this is the first improvement uh, from the trial version. So in the trial method or from the sieve of theosis method output, we see that to find a factor of n, we divide all the primes which are less than or equal to root n. In Fermat's factorization method, we notice that if we can write n as the uh, difference of two squares, x square minus y square, then this right hand side immediately give us the factors x plus y and x minus y. And we can also see conversely, if we already have a factors, suppose that n has a factorization. So here, I'm just assuming that n has a factorization that means n can be written as a into b and of course a is greater than or equal to b greater than or equal to 1. In that case we can write n as a plus b by 2 whole square minus a minus b by 2 whole square. So we always take n to be uh, let's say odd integer say n is my odd integer and in that case a and b these are also Odd. So we can consider a to be of all the type 2n plus 1 and b also of the type 2n 2m plus 1 just to bifurcate. So in that case a plus b by 2 and a minus b by 2 they both will be non-negative integers. So with this observation we can see that if somehow we can write n as the difference of two squares we get factors. Conversely if n can be written as product of this then also we can write n in that format. So now the question is how to do this. So to find possible x and y satisfying this, we start by writing this above equation in a different format and we can simply write this as x square minus n equal to y square. So here we want to search the smallest k. So we can simply say find smallest k such that k square is strictly greater than or equal to n because if this hold we can see that k square minus n is greater than or equal to 0 and we can consider this as say y square which is also greater than or equal to 0. So what we do is we start looking for some integer k such that k square is greater than or equal to n and then we look successively at the numbers k square minus n then we can have k plus 1 square minus n then we can keep on increasing this uh, with addition of 1 and we keep on finding the next integer unless until we get a square. So this process will continue until a value of m which is greater than or equal to root n is found making this as a square such that m square minus n this is a square. So if we got this as a perfect square we are going to stop and otherwise we continue this sequence. Now let's say, take an example to understand this process and we also note that this uh, sequence doesn't go to infinite because n plus 1 square minus n this is n minus 1 by 2 whole square. So you can see that if you start from n plus 1 by 2 you can get it as a perfect square n minus 1 by 2. So obviously the sequence is going to be terminate in few iterations. Now let's take this example and here we want to factor this integer n which is given 119143 and I'm using Fermat's factorization method. So we need to use again uh, from the table of squares or just by finding that 345 square this is less than 119143 and this is less than 346 square. So that means we start from this process. We start from n square. So we can start from x square minus n equal to y square. So we need to find what, what is this y and we keep on increasing this x plus 1. So if this y is a perfect square it is fine and let's consider this as our initial x. Otherwise we will keep on increasing it with a plus 1 and then plus 2 and then square it until the right hand side turns out to be a square. So this is the process. We have to start from an integer which is uh, immediately larger than the number. So we said that you choose a k, k square which is strictly greater than or equal to n. That means we are starting from this and then we are subtracting. So here this k and x they are same basically in my formula. And then I am trying to search the corresponding y. So let's start. So we have 346 square minus 119143. If I just open this uh, 346 square, we get 119716 minus 119143 and I get it as 573. So we notice that we started from k square which is greater than or equal to n 
but we also see that this is not a perfect square so we increase the next number as we have to take the next successive integer so this is 347 square minus 119143 so n is same and we get it as 120409 minus 119143 and we get the output as 1266 this is the integer now we also notice that this was also not a perfect square and then we continue 348 square. In fact, there is a formula which explains when an integer is a perfect square. An integer is a perfect square if the last two digits are 00, 01, 04, 09, 16 and continue like this. So we can see that we have a finite number of terms that we need to check. And if the last two digits are there, then we try to convert this into a perfect square. But here, now you can see that here the last two digits are 66, which is not appearing in this table. That means this is certainly not a perfect square. Similarly, this is 73, so which is not appearing in this one. So this is not a perfect square. And hence, we keep on continuing 348 square 119143. And this gives me 1961. Now 61 is appearing in this list, but we notice again that this is not a perfect square. So this is a, a necessary condition, but not a sufficient that if the last digits are 61, it doesn't guarantee us. But yeah, it is an indication for checking. So for these two cases, I do need not to check. But for this case, I need to check whether this is a perfect square or not. We can take the square root of that and then we can see that whether this is appearing as a perfect square or not. Now we continue doing this process until we get a perfect square. We get a perfect square at this last stage 4761 which is 69 square. And as I've earlier said that 58 is not in this list. So we don't need to check for 58, 57. Last two digits are 57. This is cannot be a perfect square. Even 58 cannot be a perfect square, the previous one. So either the possibility was that this we need to check or we need to check at this stage. And this turned out to be a perfect square. So here we write our term as 119143, which is our N. This is same as 352 square minus 69 square. And so this becomes 352 minus 69 and 352 plus 69. And so we get it as 421 into 283. So we get here the factorization corresponding to this. 421 into 283. And this is what we call it as Fermat's factorization method. Let us take one more example and in this case I want to factor 23449 and for this I want to factor using the Fermat's method. So again we find a k such that k square is strictly greater than or equal to n and we find that 154 square is immediately greater than 23449. So let's start the process from here. So we start now considering 154 square minus 23449 and we get that this is 23716 minus 23449 we get it as 267 now we see that 67 doesn't appear in the last two digits of the square so this we need not to check and we can go for 155 square minus 23449 which means it is 24025 minus 23449 we get this as 576 which is 24 square so you can see that we got immediately the square on both side so 23449 this is equal to 155 plus 24 and then you have 155 minus 24 and so this get 179 into 131 so that way we can find the factorization using this method